In this series of videos, we're going to talk about process costing. In the first video, I'm going to kind of explain what process costing is, what types of companies it makes sense to use process costing uh, versus job order costing, and uh, just kind of get the, give you the gist of process costing and where you might use it. In the next video, we'll walk through an example of preparing a production cost report, which is a key to understanding process costing. So the first video is a bit more uh, uh, qualitative. The, the next video will be walking through and crunching some numbers uh, related to process costing. So again, the focus here is process costing. And a good way to think about process costing is actually to contrast it with companies that should use job order costing. And so that's what we're going to do out of the gate here. So process costing, or maybe I'll start with job order costing. There's a few videos I've walked through on, on how to do the journal entries of job order costing and understanding the predetermined overhead rate and things like that. That's my previous series of videos. In this video, I just want to say what types of companies should use job order costing versus which types should use process. So job order costing, I think of as custom uh, jobs. I always think of custom when I think of job order costing. So if I have a company and I make a product that's got to be unique to my customer, in other words, every customer is a little different, every customer gets a, a little bit of a different product from me, that's job order costing. I'm making their product to order. Every job is unique, every job's a little bit different. So uh, an architectural firm is going to use job order costing because every client's different, or a legal firm, or an accounting firm, every client's a bit different. Uh, if you uh, do any custom work, even installing custom counters or cabinets, this would call for job order costing. And we've, we've worked through problems of job order costing in uh, previous videos. Process costing is the focus uh, of this series of videos. And process costing is where we have a more standard product. So it's good where there's some standardization. So for example, BIC, when they make pens, they don't make a BIC pen custom for you. They make BIC pens and they make thousands and thousands of them. They put them on the shelf and it's just whoever buys them buys them. If I go to an accounting firm and I get them to do my taxes, they're doing my taxes specific for me. It's a custom job. Uh, the BIC pen though, it's just a standardized product. Coca-Cola, Pepsi, those types of products are just standardized. Well, people with a standardized product are going to want to use process costing, something that's produced with a continuous flow. It doesn't matter who the end customer is, they're all getting the same thing. So let's think about job order costing. With job order costing, I look at every individual job and I track. So for every job, I track the material, the labor, and the overhead. And I decide, okay, how much material and labor actually went into the job? How much overhead should I apply to the job based on that predetermined overhead rate? And you know, for each individual job, I do that. Now when Coke makes you a can of Coke, when they're in the, the warehouse and they're saying, okay, this can of Coke is going to Joe Smith. I'm going to track how much material, labor, and uh, overhead went into this specific can of Coke. To do that for Coke would be absurd because they make millions and millions of cans of Coke a day. What, what a company like Coke would say is, okay, we had a million cans of Coke that went through this department this month. So went through the canning department. A million cans of Coke went through the canning department of Coke this month. The canning department had total material, labor, and overhead costs. And again, that's based on a department total of whatever it would be, a million dollars. And so then they say, okay, if a million cans of Coke went through and we spent a million dollars on material, labor, and overhead, must have been a dollar per can. Uh, and so that's the way process costing does things. Job order costing, you look at each job individually, you say how much material, labor, and overhead went into the job. Process costing, though, you look at the department and you say, okay, how much material and labor and overhead did that department spend for the month, for the year, for the quarter, for whatever period of time you want to look at. You say how many output uh, equivalent units did my department output, so in this case a million cans of Coke. Um, take one number, divide by the other, and you get a cost per unit. So very different systems, 
and they make sense for very different companies. If I have a custom job, I can't say, oh, what was the total cost of my department for the month and divide by the number of customers. No way, right? Every customer is different. Every customer has different costs. If I make pens and they're all the same pen, I don't need to say, oh, how much did pen one cost compared to pen two? I'll say, I made a million pens. I spent this many dollars. This is my cost. So what we're going to learn in this series of videos is how to track these costs on a departmental level. And we're going to learn how to make something called the production report. And so that's going to be the focus of our next video. I'm going to walk through uh, step by step how to prepare a weighted average production report. That's it for this video. Stay 